Driving at Home with ABOR's housing economist, Claire Losey. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to our Driving at Home podcast with Dr. Claire Losey. Welcome, Claire. Thanks so much for having me. I am Kalea Youngblood, your Chief Marketing Officer here at the Austin Board of Realtors. And we're going to dive right in because we are going to talk about the Fed's rate decision last Wednesday. And so, Dr. Losey, why don't you tell us, you know, the Federal Reserve met last week to discuss rates. What was the outcome of the meeting and what are the implications for the markets moving forward? We'll kick it off with that. Awesome. So as we all know by now, the Federal Reserve opted not to hike rates at its meeting last week. The Fed funds rate is currently hovering between 5.25 and 5.5%. However, if the economy evolves as predicted, it is likely that the Fed will opt to hike rates by 25 basis points or 0.25 percentage points by the end of the year. So in either its November or December meeting, we're broadly anticipating a 25 basis point rate hike, which would situate the Fed funds rate between 5.5 and 5.75% by the end of 2023. And then the median Federal Open Market Committee participant forecasts the Fed funds rate being about 5.1% at the end of 2024 and 3.9% at the end of 2025. And the reason those numbers are important is because they're now higher than what had been anticipated in June. So essentially, the median projection While it's unrevised for the end of 2023, it's moved up by 0.5 percentage points for the end of the next two years. So really what this is all saying is just that rates will remain higher for longer. And as to the market's reaction to the Fed's decision, the fact that rates remained unchanged was in line with market expectations However, the Fed's rhetoric on its more aggressive monetary policy stance moving forward into 2024 and 2025, i.e. this idea of rates being higher for longer, just casts a more pessimistic outlook on the economy than markets had previously anticipated. So last Wednesday, for example, the day that the rate decision was announced, The S&P 500 was down nearly 1%, while the yield on two-year treasuries, which reflect interest rate expectations, hit 17-year highs. So break that down into a headline for our Realtor members um, with regard to what should they share with their buyers and sellers right now with regard to how the market's going to react with these mortgage rates. Essentially, that the expectations for higher for longer rates mean that mortgage rates themselves will remain elevated over the near term. That's important to set it, the setting those expectations with buyers and you know talking to their lenders about settling into what they can afford, knowing that the interest rates will potentially stay elevated for a longer period of time. Right. And to break that down a little bit, so last week, the mortgage rate averaged 7.919%, which is just one basis point higher than the prior week at 7.18%. However, last week's rate really doesn't factor in the ripple effect of the Fed's decision on markets. So we're really going to see the decision being priced into mortgage rates this week. And really by the decision, I'm again referring to this higher for longer expectation. So again, rates are likely to remain elevated. And the 10-year Treasury yield last week continued to climb higher, primarily due to two factors, the first of which we've already discussed, just the Fed signaling a more restrictive stance on monetary policy moving forward than had been previously anticipated. And the second just being a lower reading on initial jobless claims, which came in at 201,000, well below the Dow Jones forecast of 225,000. So essentially, this expectation that rates will remain higher for longer and also that monetary policy hasn't necessarily been restrictive enough to bring the economy 
back to a better balance. Okay. Well, let's flip it around a little bit and talk about what we should expect here week to week in Central Texas. What are our weekly stats look like? So last week, closed sales were down about 5%, which really coincides with the uptick in mortgage rates we've seen since August. I know our listeners are well aware of this fact, but it takes about a month or two months really for the data to reflect any change in mortgage rates, either up or down. But it takes a little while for the data to reflect that. So we're now well over a month into more elevated mortgage rate environment. And we're starting to see a little bit of an effect on closed sales. And two, we're just moving into a less popular home buying season, right? We're moving out of the a little bit more busy spring and summer months. And of course, school has been in full swing for several weeks now, upwards of a month, two months now. Meanwhile, closed leases were down nearly 29%. So just not as much movement in the market last week. Of course, this does put buyers in a little bit of a better position. You know, despite higher mortgage rates, they have a little bit more negotiating power, so to speak, perhaps, with their purchase. So there's certainly a lot more leverage there to articulate to buyers than we've seen, of course, in years past. Yeah, it's a great time to get the buyers off the fence. Well, that actually is a great segue into a bit of a, a promotion to our last ABOR member event of the year. We're having a market shift conversations about the buyer's rep agreement, actually, with longtime guru Avis Wukash and a peer-to-peer panel on how to leverage the IABS form and buyer's rep agreements to your advantage when working with buyers, especially this climate with regards to just the uncertainty and the uneasiness that we've seen with the the changing market and helping buyers understand and navigate what to expect and how to expect to purchase a home in Central Texas. And so we're going to have the, that conversation on March, I'm sorry, March, <laughs> October 10th from 10 to noon. You can register at abor.com and we hope to see you there. It'll be virtual as well as in person. And I know you'll attend as well, Claire. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for the update. And Thanks to all of our listeners. We'll see you next week. Have a great day. Thanks, guys.